Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Super Colonization. Today we are going to be playing with dirt, but before we could do so we need to make some room in the area. We are going to be starting with moving the multi-resource drilling rig that we built last episode. But before we can move it out of the area, we are going to need to go and take a stop at our Kerbal Transport so that we can fill our drilling rig up with Kerbals. Right now we only have one Kerbal on board and that's not enough to get peak efficiency out of our drilling rig. Once we have our drilling rig parked beside our crew transport, we can send a Kerbal out to connect the two vehicles together and start transferring our crew over. Once our crew is transported over to our drilling rig, we can disconnect the pipe and start heading out. We are going to be moving this drilling rig about 10 kilometers east of our current location. And the main reason for this is so that we have less crafts in a single area, which overall will make it easier for me because we'll have more reasonable frame rates. The location that we are going to has the exact same resource distribution as the location that we are currently at. So this drilling rig should still function as intended. This drilling rig is also surprisingly easy to drive. It tops out at about 30 meters per second, and due to its wide wheelbase and relatively low center of mass, it's surprisingly stable at those speeds. Once we have reached the desired location, we could come to a stop and redeploy all of our solar panels and drills. If you don't know what this vehicle's purpose is, I would highly recommend going back to last episode, in which we built this and explained what its purpose is. But with that complete, we can now head back over to our building base and start working on our projects for today. The first thing that we need to build today is a dirt drill, and we are going to be recycling a design that we used a couple episodes ago. This is the same craft design that we used for our ore drill. Instead of drills that mine ore, we have drills that mine dirt. Other than that, the vehicle is the exact same. Once we have it built, we can send a Kerbal out to man the craft. From there, we can drive it over to the crew transport, send a Kerbal out to connect the two vehicles with pipes, and transfer over enough crew for this vehicle to function properly. Once we have all of our crew transferred over, we can disconnect the pipes and send our Kerbal back into our vehicle. Just like our last drilling rig, we are going to be moving this vehicle outside of this general area. But this time, we are going to be heading west instead of east. Even though we have used this style of drilling rig before, we have never driven it more than a couple hundred meters, so I actually don't know how well it drives. Luckily, it turns out that it drives extremely well. It has a top speed of almost 40 meters per second, and it controls very well for a vehicle of this size. Once we are far enough from the other base, we could come to a stop and deploy our drills. And this is where our first problem comes in. Even though these drills are in the same style as the original ore drills we had on this vehicle, these drills are saying that there is no ground contact. And obviously that's a major issue because that means it actually can't mine any dirt. The drill bits do sink pretty far into the ground so I figure that we must not be that far off from being able to get the resources. So instead of scrapping this vehicle and building a new one with lower drills, I figured that I would try something to make the drills a little bit closer. I drove around for a little bit looking for an area that has a relatively rapid change in slope. And I figured that if I had this vehicle parked on the slope, and the drills located right on the edge of where the terrain changes slope, it should make the drill sit slightly deeper into the ground. It did take a couple of attempts to find just the right spot, but I did manage to find an area where it actually worked. Now that our three dirt drills are deep enough to function, we run into another problem. And that problem is that we actually have no dirt storage on board, which means that we can't actually mine any dirt. When I was redesigning this craft, I was pretty sure that I did include dirt storage, but for some reason it seems that the storage containers reverted back to what they were originally. The only way to fix this is to send out another vehicle that we could connect to this that has the capability of storing dirt. So we could head back to our building site and get that built. This is a small rover that has a capacity of 1200 dirt, which should be more than enough storage since we're going to be putting all the dirt into the planetary logistics system anyways. Once the storage rover is built, it starts to roll away. Silly me forgot to put a probe core on it, so we have to go try to catch it. After a quick 600 meter jetpack, we finally catch up to the rover and enter it. From here, we could drive it all the way over to the drilling rig. Once we reach the drilling rig, we could do the standard connecting procedure. And once our storage rover is connected up, we come into another problem. And it turns out that the storage on the rover isn't set up for dirt. Unlike the dirt drilling rig where I couldn't be 100% certain that I did include dirt storage, I know that I for sure set the two tanks on this rover to be able to store dirt. But for some reason, they were reverted back to the default metallic ore storage. After thinking about what could be causing this issue, I do come up with a solution. When you're in the VAB or the space plane hangar, and you set your tanks to hold a certain resource, if you then add a part to your vehicle, 
and then press Ctrl Z to remove the part you just added because it wasn't the right one or not in the right location or something, it seems to revert the storage back to the default. This is a problem that I knew existed for KIS storage, but I didn't know that these tanks also had that same issue. And I'm pretty sure that's what happened to both of these vehicles. So since I've already saved the game, we actually have to make another storage vehicle. So we could head back to the building base, and this time create a rover that has the proper storage. This time I also did add a probe course, that way we didn't have to chase it down the hill once built. Then we could drive this one over to the dirt drilling rig. Once we get this rover connected up, we could finally see how much dirt we're actually drilling. I was actually surprised by the amount of dirt that this drilling rig was able to pull in. With the three drills running at maximum capacity, we're pulling in about 250 dirt per second. This is likely far more than what we'll ever need, but regardless, this set of crafts will be throwing all of the excess dirt into the planetary logistics system, and we'll just have to use what we can. Now that we have dirt being fed into the planetary logistics system, we could head back to our building base and start working on our next project. The next thing that we need is a way to process all of this dirt. It is a fairly large facility that has four dirt refinery plants. Along with that, it does also include a logistics module so that we could pull resources from the planetary logistics system. Before we could turn on this facility, we are going to need two things. The first one is machinery. Each one of the modules has a capacity for 2,000 machinery each and need a minimum of 500 machinery to run. The second thing that we need is Kerbals, because obviously we need somebody to be able to run all of the machinery. So the first thing that we could do is get the machinery dealt with. But the problem is, we have pretty much no machinery on the surface of Duna, so we're going to need to send it down from the father ship. Once we get up to the father ship, we could build our machinery transport vehicle. This craft is powered by six rocket engines that have approximately 700 kilonewtons of thrust each. It adds a logistics module on board so that we could transfer our machinery into the planetary logistics system once we are on the ground, and we will be bringing down about 14,000 machinery. This amount of machinery is overkill for the amount that we need for our refinery, but we will still need more machinery for other things that we build before we could start producing machinery on the surface. So with the 14,000 machinery that we are bringing down, that should be enough to cover everything that we're going to need. I was planning on landing this rocket in the same area that we dropped off our material kits and specialized parts. But as we start coming into Duna's atmosphere, I noticed that my accuracy was pretty far off this time. There is absolutely nothing wrong with landing this where we're going to be landing, but I figured that we may as well try to land all of our delivery vehicles in the same general area. But since that's not going to happen, we could just deploy our parachutes and come in for a landing pretty much anywhere. While this craft does have a lot of parachutes, with Duna's thin atmosphere, it's still not enough to be able to slow us down enough for landing, so we will have to use our engines to kill off more velocity. But we do still have a little bit of horizontal velocity, and because the parachutes do create a lot of drag at the top of the spacecraft, it does make landing a little bit more difficult than it should have been. But in the end, we do manage to land without any issues. Once our spacecraft is landed, our machinery is transported into the planetary logistics system, and we are ready to head back to our build site. The last thing that our dirt processing facility needs to function properly is Kerbals. So for this, we are going to need a transport vehicle. Luckily, we don't need to transport them very far, but seeing as the facility itself obviously isn't exactly something that could be moved, and our crew delivery rocket isn't maneuverable enough to be able to move it closer, we can just build a small rover to move the Kerbals from our crew transport over to our facility. And for that job, I have designed this. It is a small rover with three crew cabins. Each of the crew cabins hold 10 Kerbals each, and for their size, these cabins do hold a pretty large amount of Kerbals, but they are designed for transport only, which is what we are going to be using them for today. So once our rover is built, we can send it over to our crew transport, pipe it up, and fill it with Kerbals. We only need 26 Kerbals to fully man our dirt processing facility, and the total amount of Kerbals that this vehicle can hold is 32 but we will be filling it up completely because we can keep this rover connected up to the dirt processing facility and get that little bit of extra production out of those Kerbals that are going to be staying in the vehicle. Once we have all of our crew transferred to the rover, we can disconnect the rover and drive it over to our dirt processing facility. And of course, once we are there, we can connect up the rover to our dirt processing facility and start transferring over all the Kerbals. We can also use the logistics module to pull in all the machinery that we're going to need and distribute them between all the modules. With all of this complete, we are now ready to turn on the facility and see how well it works. And sadly, it pretty much doesn't work at all. It has nothing to do with the design that I have made. 
but instead it's how the dirt processing units work now. This is the first time that I've done dirt processing since the last major MKS update. And that last large update changed quite a bit about how MKS worked. And sadly, it seems to have completely nerfed dirt processing down to a point where it's literally useless. The way dirt processing used to work is that you used to be able to bring in a lot of dirt, and when you processed it, you would get a small amount of every single resource that was available on the planet. But in the last update, it was changed so that instead of getting a small amount of every resource available, you instead got recyclables. You can then process those recyclables into a small amount of metal, chemicals, and polymers. Considering the amount of resources and kerbals that it takes to be able to build a facility like this, along with the dirt drilling rig to be able to feed dirt into it, the amount of resources that you get out of this process is basically nothing. Even though the dirt processing unit is supposed to be an inefficient way to get resources, considering we have four large dirt processing modules, I was expecting to see a reasonable amount of resources coming in. It wouldn't be enough for everything we need on Duna, it should have been enough for us to be able to start producing material kits and specialized parts. But after turning everything on, the amount of resources that we are getting are showing up as 0.00. .00. So I wasn't sure if this was a bug or not, so I time accelerated until we started to get stuff in. And we did very slowly start getting a little bit of resources. After 4 days of time acceleration, we ended up with only one metal, one chemical, and one polymer. This is pretty much nothing. It's nowhere near enough to do anything with. And while I haven't ran the numbers yet, looking at the speed that we are getting these resources in, it will take decades for us just to be able to cover the cost of the facility itself. So in the end, all of the work that we did today is basically for nothing. It has no real functional purpose, and it was a massive waste of resources. I went into the mods code to see what the amount of resources that we should be getting are, and I was pretty surprised at the number that I seen. The effectiveness of the dirt processing module is only 0.000005, which in all reality is basically zero. I want to say that this is a bug with a mod, but I haven't looked into it yet so I'm not completely sure. This might actually be functioning as intended. If this is the intended rate, then Roverdude might as well just take dirt processing out of the mod entirely, because in its current state it is absolutely useless. While I was looking at the code for the mod, I did increase the effectiveness of the dirt processing units up to 1000 times more, which should bring it on par to how it used to work. But because this craft is already built, it will not actually affect this one. I went into the save file to see if I could change it there, but I couldn't find the effectiveness, so there's absolutely no way to fix this facility. And since there is no way to fix this facility, and it doesn't actually produce enough of anything for it to be useful, we may as well just get rid of it. We do have a couple options on how to do this. The best option would be to disassemble it piece by piece and get back a portion of the resources we spent on it. But considering I've spent many hours designing, building, and getting everything up and running just for this, I would rather get rid of it in a little bit more of an entertaining way. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet, but off camera I will evacuate all the kerbals out and remove all the machinery we put into it. And for next episode we can start off with a bang. But for now that is going to be it. Thank you everybody for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. I do really appreciate it, and I hope everyone has a great day. See ya.